Hello YouTube, how you doing? Today I'm going to be smoking a pipe by request. A good friend of mine recommended that I smoke a Larson that I had uh, purchased a few years back and had a uh, it had a uh, bamboo stem when I bought it and the stem broke uh, to my error and uh, uh, careless handling uh, and so I took it to Boswell's to get refurnished and they put a beautiful uh, briar stem on instead which actually the bamboo stem was nice but this is actually uh, better looking and as you can tell it's uh, one of the uh, sought after straight grains a very good one at that you can see uh, on all sides it's uh, perfectly up and down gorgeous straight green and uh, it's made by Larson the uh, the younger and uh, so I have HH uh, H. dark fired in it and I'm gonna light it up now it's, I'm going to make one caveat as they would say and that uh, uh, I believe I believe it was oh I'm gonna I believe it was the Great Lakes Piper uh, forgive me if I'm wrong if I am I will correct it in the next video that uh, called it the tulip shape and uh, he coined it and as you can tell it does sort of look like a tulip with the bowl and everything in the top and it was a perfect description of this pipe and I haven't smoked it in uh, in quite a bit so without further ado as the French say um, say moi smoking a Larson uh, pipe By the way, I'm using Angela's Tamper, of Angela's brand new bag that I've had sitting around for a while. She sent me a couple. This one, uh, this one, the top sort of cracked off, but I have to uh, crazy glow it on. But it's only the top, you see. It's nice Tamper. So it's the HH Dark Fired 
by Mebaron, I believe it is. And I'm smoking it in my tulip shaped handmade Larson. And of course, I'm using the softy bit on there. And the Cleveland lighter to prevent any charring. It's almost unavoidable sometimes, but it can always be, it can always be uh, slightly sanded down. So thank you for uh, suggesting that I use this pipe. If you don't know, Great Legs Piper. Yeah, it's a very... Uh, entertaining channel and I want you to check him out so we're into Tuesday already and uh, uh, I don't know if the women folk as they would say uh, of your uh, like your better half was watching the bachelor last night mine certainly was cut into the football game but i was bouncing back and but yeah during the commercials yeah i watched it with her i watched the bachelor and uh during the commercial i would i would check on the score with the ohio uh Oregon game and I was surprised that it ended up as semi if not a genuine blowout I thought the Ducks were better than that but the Buckeyes came through I was rooting for the Buckeyes because it's a sister state to Pennsylvania the only time I was in Ohio was way back in about oh gee 76 or so when I was showing off at a car meet in Medina, uh, my pristine 54 Custom Stars Chief Catalina. Uh, that's the way it is in the catalog, actually. Pontiac, yeah. Uh, Custom, what is it? Star Chief Custom Catalina Coupe. And it was the, uh, Second only to the convertible that year. And it had, uh, of course, the Indian headlight that lights up and all that. And it had the leather interior. Power brakes, power steering. Uh, the sun visor. Well, actually, I believe I put the sun visor on later. But, uh, actually look, some people say it looks better without it. But, uh, it, it had all the options, even the chrome on chrome, 
Remember how they used to put extensions on the chrome that was already there? On the bumpers? And, uh, had everything but the wire wheels. The optional bolt-in bolt wire wheels, you know, that some cars had. Which I missed out at a meet up in Hershey. Uh made the classic mistake oh uh, let me let me confer with my wife they're a little expensive and by the time i got back there they were sold of course one of the most expensive parts i ever bought for it believe it or not was the uh exhaust deflector with the indian head engraved you know in embedded in there and the guy didn't want to sell it so I had to go up the 300 bucks and that was about uh, a few years later maybe call it 78 but a lot of money back then for an exhaust deflector and the car had the big old straight eight it actually believe it or not I know you're gonna laugh but it actually bought, it was owned by a, uh elderly woman that uh, actually it was chauffeured. It was a chauffeured car down on the uh, area called uh, 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 Ardmore on a road called Montgomery Avenue. And she had three estate cars. When I bought it, it only had 39000 And when I sold it, a uh, little period of time when I went insane, tongue-in-cheek, it had 59000 <laughs> But it went for a good home. The guy, uh, he sort of uh, put the uh, finishing touches on an already incredible automobile by uh, uh, putting the big wide Denman tires like 400 a piece you know, and uh, 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 replaced the leather that had started to separate but a uh, car in those days with power steering power brakes back in 54 was something in itself uh, of course, and the Pontiac, believe it or not, you could get power window lifts, even back then, way back then, but it didn't have the power lifts. But uh, a little bit of Pontiac trivia, because I was a Pontiac fan all my life. I had a 63, a 61, a 62, you name it, I had a... Anyway, but... Uh, uh, I had the biggest trunk in the auto industry. Uh, if you want to get technical, maybe I know it had the biggest trunk in GM. Let's go with that because there's all kinds of cars out there, even bigger than a Cadillac. And inside that trunk came the original flares. You could get these, uh, the road flares. And, uh, uh, what other features did it have? Oh, an under seat heater, believe it or not. And, of course, that magnificent straight eight engine. So that's the story for today. I don't know how I got on that, but. Forgive me if I rambled. I will show a, a picture of the car at some point. So you know what that means. Take care of yourself, be good, and by all means, happy smoking.